Hey, you. Yeah. You. You looking for a monster boyfriend? Well, let's change that, shall we? Hi, hello, yes, it's me, it's your girl Amber. Welcome back to my channel. And yes, my hair is wet. I just took a shower. I needed to clean myself. I was nasty. But I don't think you guys really care that much. Because today we're gonna be looking for our monster boyfriends together. Or girlfriends, if you will. I don't judge. Today we'll be talking about a webcomic I recently started reading, but have known about four years, uh, called Barbarous. Uh, Barbarous is a webcomic created by Yuko Ota and Aneth Hirsch. If you may or may not know them from their works, such as Lucky Penny, uh, which I also own. I've owned since 2016. That's how I, I how I found these guys. Cuttings, Wander, our cats are a lot more famous than us. That's roughly the title at least. Uh, but that they have some fairly well-known stuff. They've, they've been published for a while. Barbarous was published, I think, in 2014, 2015. Uh, there are roughly five chapters. They post a page, not a day. Uh, they don't necessarily, at least for right now, they don't have a set schedule. I want to say they posted once a week when they started, but uh, you know, I wasn't there when they started, so can't really say much for that. And I figured what better time to start actually reading Barbarous than during quarantine. And let me tell you, I've, I've had a blast, honestly. Uh, Barbarous follows a young wizarding university dropout named Chiaki Persephone Mori, who likes to go by Percy. And also, if I mispronounced her name, I'm so sorry. And it's actually, if you wanted me to give you an idea of the type of story it is, it's, and this is a very poor way to describe this because this is based off of popular media that I consume, based off of a mix of Harry Potter, sorry, and My Hero Academia. If you mix that together and have it be about a person who dropped out of the main school system and you get to see the world outside of that school system, then you have a pretty decent idea of what Barbarous will be. Uh, we first meet Percy when she has just dropped out, I believe. Uh, she looks homeless, she's riding this train, she's got most of her processions with her, she seems pretty downtrodden, which, you know, a lot of dropouts usually are. Uh, societal pressures, am I right? Not that I would know what it's like to drop out of school, but you know. And while on this train, she watches a robber take someone's bag. Um, and she immediately goes and tries to stop him, but she's not the only one. There is a, another person, a monster-like creature who uh, we later learn is Leeds, who also steps in to help. And this is where we first see uh, Percy using her powers. We have no idea what it is, but they are like these little purple magical strings that come out of her. Uh, long story short, they catch this guy. Uh, they end up setting, by they I mean Percy, set this bag, which is a designer bag apparently, on fire. So they save the day, but also they ruin the day. So uh, the cops basically tell them to get lost because it would take a lot of paperwork to document a magic incident, which interesting. Leeds chases after Percy and says, hey, thanks, you know, um, you also look a little injured there because she got burned um, trying to get the bag away from the guy. And she says, well, I don't have health insurance, so I can't really go see anybody. Um, and he's like, well, I, I'll, I'll bandage it up for you, blah, blah, blah. And so he's like, come with me. Uh, I will at least take care of that for you. And she reluctantly goes with him. They end up going to where he works, which is a, well, he also technically lives there, uh, which is an apartment complex. They end up going inside. 
and she meets the owner slash Leeds boss, Cecilia. Cecilia is one of my favorite characters and we barely see much of her as it is. She, if I had to describe Cecilia, Cecilia is the type of character who <laughs> you love to hate, but sometimes you hate to love because she is very clearly good at manipulating Percy to do what she wants. So she offers Percy a job because she knows that she has had past ties with the Wizarding Academy, which by the way, the Wizarding Academy is called Almia? A-L-M-I-A. -A. I don't know if that is short for something or if that's just the name of the school. Uh, that's all we have so far. Side note, I really want their Almia sweatshirt that they have in their shop. So Percy is being reluctant. She doesn't really want to work here. She's not sure. Um, she says, I don't think you really want to work with a wizarding dropout. Uh, and Cecilia's like, well, yeah, someone who has bad magic, especially, and who knew that there was bad magic. By the way, we're thrown into this world and we're given like certain terms and it's not like we're getting all the terms thrown at us. Just FYI, when you step into this, they're going to start saying things. They're going to be like glamour. What uh, is it? Glamour or glimmer? It's gl glimmer. I'll put the actual note on the screen and tell you what it is, but glimmer is magic that alters your appearance. If that's wrong, I will also correct myself in a box. If not, it's just gonna be an empty screen. So seeing Cecilia, she sees, Percy sees one of her hands is skeletal. Um, <laughs> Cecilia notes that she's looking at it and she says, oh yes, it's a bit distracting, isn't it? Percy says, is it glimmer? She says, no, it's more of a parting gift. So that already is like sending off red flags in my head. By this whole thing alone with Cecilia, I personally would have thought she would have been named Persephone for many reasons. Uh, there's two. One, she looks like a Persephone to me. She would have been perfect for it, but also Cecilia's nice, so I'm really not complaining. Two, she has a skeleton hand. Do I really need to explain that one? So yes, uh, eventually uh, Percy accepts because A, she has student debt and B, um, she is homeless. So she takes it up based on the fact that she will get free lodging, she'll get minimum wage, and there was another term, but I don't exactly remember. Either way, she accepts uh, and she is to work side by side with Leeds. Now, to describe Leeds, Leeds is a gentle giant. He's very shy. He doesn't really speak much to other people. He seems to have trouble wanting to talk to people. But with Percy, he is exceptionally so in that they have a very tense relationship in the beginning. Uh, we don't exactly know why until I want to say chapter three, no chapter two or chapter three. We learn that he is a familiar. Uh, yes, this world also has familiars. Uh, and in this world, familiars do not have wills of their own. But Leeds is one of, is a curious case because he does. Um, that does not mean he is not affected by the wills of others. It just means that he is an oddball. But it also means that he is very wary of Alima, Almia, forgive me. Because in their eyes, to see a familiar that has a will is something that needs to either A, be investigated, or B, dealt with. And if you don't know what I mean by dealt with, uh, basically, in a not nice term, probably eliminated. We haven't been confirmed on that one yet. And even if we were, I don't want to spoil that far ahead. I'm just going to talk about the first three chapters. So in like the first chapter, we see them have a really tense standoff. They're starting, they're trying to learn more about each other. Um, Percy is seen as, it is very, comes across as a very 
com not necessarily combative, but she's very defensive. She's on edge, she's tense. Um, if I had to describe it, she probably is still reeling from her failure um, from dropping out of school. And that I think really messed with like how she deals with other people. From what I can gather from what I've read, she was one of the top students. She was a promising student even. So I assume she comes with a lot of baggage of wanting to be perfect, wanting to do everything right, wanting praise, wanting to be the, the person that everyone looks up to or loves or uh, idolizes. And the fact that she's here now, she's homeless. Um, in chapter two, we learn that um, her dad, because we only hear from her dad, we know she has a sister. Her dad is less than pleased that she dropped out. I think he even went as far as to say like, you know, you are being disrespectful or bringing dishonor kind of sort of on our family uh, or at least he's he's pushing that on her. Really sad, but alas, that is how it's going. Forgive me, my lights going out. I need new batteries. Essentially, their their relationship is strained. So, she has no real connection with her family right now. I assume she moved out or she just didn't go home after she dropped out, which is possible. In short, Percy is a ball of insecurity, walking on the heels of her past successes, I assume. As we go along, we see that they form a, a they're trying to form a better relationship. Leeds is trying to come to terms with that. She, Percy was a wizard. He's not sure if she's going to, if, if she ever decides to go back, if she'll snitch, essentially, uh, turn him in. And she's like, well, I'm not, I don't think so. I, I don't see why, but that becomes relevant later. So just keep that little tidbit in the back of your head. And we also see in some case, in some like bits, what she was like in school, probably what led up to her demise, and we even get some internal battles that I will not be discussing because that is spoiler territory. All I will say is that there's not there's not a lot to read. There it could take you I want to say four hours to finish this whole story up to the current point. It will not take you long to get up to what's current. But let me tell you, the payoff is going to be lovely, and I cannot wait to see what happens next. I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Uh, not the seat, but metaphorically, <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat, ready to see more about Persephone's backstory and what she really is because bad magic, hmm, what could that mean? Who knows? But do I recommend it? Absolutely I do. I am surprised there are not a lot more people talking about it. There are people who are out there who know about it. For example, I've seen um, Noelle Stevenson, I think that's her name, the uh, creator of She-Ra, Lumberjanes, there's a couple other things but it doesn't really matter right now. She mentioned it on her Twitter and I was like, oh yeah, no, this is a well-known thing. People know about this, but I don't see a lot of reviews on this story. And I think that's a crying shame because this story deserves a lot of attention. I know in the beginning it starts off a little bit slow. That's not necessarily too slow though. You get, you're starting to get like little peaks. It's that this is where the My Hero Academia stuff comes in. You get little peaks into the type of world this kind of school is. Of course, I bring in the wizardry stuff because you know, magic because everything has to be compared to Harry Potter apparently uh, but that's the only thing that comes to mind that I can think of so forgive me yes I definitely recommend you read this um, if you read the first chapter on the website uh, each page is named with a weird little caption that I assume one of the two authors named them as uh, and once you get past that then they, they're named like chapter 2 page 0 5 or chapter three, page 25. So there's not a lot of Easter eggs on that, but I, I do recommend reading on the website first. There are printed copies, which is where I come into this. I have the first three chapters here. Uh, these 
are usually put up on Kickstarter. I did the Kickstarter for chapter three. So I got chapter three plus the first two volumes at uh, chapters. I recently pledged to their latest Kickstarter for chapter four. Uh, as of this moment, that pledge, that, that whole Kickstarter campaign is over. It, it ended over the weekend. I'm very excited to own that chapter. That chapter is really cool. There's a certain art page that I'm very excited to have put into the book uh, because it's just so cool and it, uh, the art style variations on that. And, uh, I may put the picture up here, but I don't know how far I want to spoil that for you. Uh, but I highly recommend if you enjoy this story, uh, buy the books. They are called, they are the lead size, as in like leads the, the familiar. They're really fun. They're big. They, they, they're just pretty. I love their art style so much so much fun. Their writing is also really great. There's a lot of humor in it. There's also a lot of serious moments. When you, if there's another Kickstarter, I highly recommend that more people join in on it. Uh, chapter five, I am also looking forward to having in print. Chapter five is a doozy, man. It is a doozy. And we are currently on page 33 or 34 of chapter five. That's all I'm gonna say. So yes, please give Barbarous a read. Uh, also give some of their other things a read, like Lucky Penny. Um, it's kind of cute. It's, it's actually more than kind of cute, it's very cute. Follow them on Twitter. They're very interesting folks. Uh, and yeah, but I feel like more people should read this webcomic, especially now, especially if you have time. Uh, it, it's well worth it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all today. Uh, please give it a check out. Um, I'll link the, both the website where you can read their stuff. Um, specifically, I'll probably put it to the first page of Barbarous. Um, I will also link to their shop where you can buy their books and also their other merch. You can find all their stuff on johnnywander.com. I th think that's like their little brand uh, little brand. Uh, that's so patronizing. Uh, their brand, Johnny Wonder. And that's it. That's all. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. Um, if you feel like it, uh, if you want to see more videos where I review and recommend new stuff, please hit subscribe. Um, I try to update, I probably update like twice a week. Uh, or at least I'll try to post at least once a week, depending on how busy I am. I should have mentioned this a while ago. I was recently in a podcast with my friend Caleb on his podcast, Cream Demented. Uh, Cream, Cream Demented? I should know this. I designed his freaking logo. But we did a podcast with him and two of his other friends who are very lovely people. Uh, I hope to be on his podcast again doing what we did. We did a script reading for Scott Pilgrim, which is fun fact, really not one of my favorite movies, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a three hour podcast and I voiced many a varying female character, but I got to voice Ramona Flowers, who is one of the, my least favorite characters. <laughs> So, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'll also link that below. Uh, also, give Caleb a listen. He's really fun. His voice is very melodic. He plays a lot of video games. He's just a really chill dude. Love him dearly. And, uh, yeah. That's it for today. I will see you guys soon. Stay safe. Stay uh, hydrated. Stay away from COVID. Wear a mask. Vote in November. And if you're going to school, um, you're in my thoughts because I hope you're not going in physically. And if you are, at least try to stay away from other people. That's all I ask. And with that being said, I will see you again soon. See you later. Bye.